Hi everyone, my name is Anagha and I'm part of the data science discovery team and in this video today we are going to be doing a question on data frame filtering uh, as well as choosing the major that admitted the most amount of students. So let's go ahead and get started. So here it says write the Python code to calculate the major that admitted the most students and leave a single row of that major as the only row in the data frame most students. So we see here that there's um, two things that are going on. Right? First, let's go ahead and output our data frame to see what it looks like. And here, it's, it's basically the admission records from UC Berkeley's grad program in fall 1973. So we have these many rows here, 12, uh, 12,763 rows, right? And each row represents a application to the UC Berkeley basically grad program in fall 1973. And it contains their year, major, gender, as well as the admission decision of that application. So here we wanna see the major that admitted the most students and leave a single row of that major as the only row in the data frame most students. So we here have this entire data frame of all these different applications, but we wanna find just that one major that admitted the most students. So first, we're seeing that, you know, this, this contains all of these admission decisions, but we only want to see the major, major that, ex, that accepted or admitted the most students. So the first, basically, step here that we want to take is to go ahead, step one is to filter the data frame to only include accepted slash admitted students, right? Because that's what we're looking at. We just want the major that admitted the most students, um, not rejected them, right? So let's go ahead and do that right now. Right, so first we have DF, uh, we can call it DF accepted equals DF, um, and then within my brackets, I wanna include my conditional, right? So DF, um, in brackets admission which is that admission column should be equal, should be equal to accepted now if I go ahead and print out DF accepted it's only going to include all of these accepted applications right which makes sense and now we see here these accepted applications for are all these for, are for all these different types of majors right but we want to have the major that admitted the most students. So we want to see basically how many students were admitted for each major, right? That's the only way we can find the major that admitted the highest one. First, we need to find out how many students did each major even admit, right? And to do that, well, we're going to have to group our data frame, right? So our step two is going to be to basically group the DF, uh, which data frame it's going to be DF accepted, right? Because we only want to include the accepted students. So we want to group this data frame. What do we want to group by? Well, we want to group by major, right? Because we want to find the major that admi admitted the most students. Basically, we want to have a data frame where each row represents each major, and it, it tells us how many students were admitted for that major, and then we just want to find the highest row in that. We just want to find the, the major with that highest amount, right? So we want to group DF accepted by major, and we want to aggregate by, well, we know we have, uh, we can aggregate by mean, we can aggregate by count, or the sum. Well, it doesn't make sense finding the mean of anything here, right? We can't find the mean year, the mean major, or the mean gender admission. That doesn't really make sense. So now we're wondering if we should aggregate by sum or by count. Well, we have here all of these accepted applications, and we basically just want to count up how many accepted applications were in each major, right? How many students were admitted into each major. So we want to go ahead and, you know, go through each row and basically count up how many rows were in each major because we're only dealing with accepted rows in the first place. So we, we don't really care about the admission because it's only accepted, right? So we want to go ahead and basically for each major, how many rows in this data frame belong to each major, right? So that is an indication that we should use count, right? We're not really summing anything here. It doesn't make sense to sum up the year or the gender or the admission. You can't sum strings anyways. And summing up the year just doesn't make sense, right? Because we don't want to find like the total 
some of all the years that you know each each application and each major applied to right um we simply want to find how many rows belong in each major so we want to go ahead <coughs> and basically um group by major using count right so we want to do df we can call this um you know another another name basically so maybe we can call it I don't know df major because we're, we're grouping by major so equals df accepted right we only want to look at df accepted because we only want to look at all these accepted students dot group by um and here we want to group by major dot aggregate by count and then dot reset index and let's go ahead and print out df major to see what that looks like and basically here we have each row represents each major and these numbers, which are the same in each row, represents how many applicants, how many accepted applicants were for each single major. And the reason why all these values are the same is because when we're aggregating by count, we don't really care about <clears throat> these specific values in each of these specific columns for each row. We're simply just counting up how many rows belong in each major. That's why 914 is same throughout this this first row for major a because at the end of the day there were 914 rows for major a there were 914 total accepted applicants for major a for major b there were 370 total accepted applicants so we're just basically going through the data frame and for each major we're just counting up the rows that belong in in that group which we're grouping by which is that major if we were to use sum instead we would see here there's only one column, which makes sense because we can't sum up gender and admission because those are both string variables. We can only sum up the numerical variable, which is year. So it's basically going through each row, and for each row that belongs in major A, for major B, C, D, it's just summing up all those years in those specific rows, which is why these are such large numbers because we're summing up like 1973 a bunch of times for however many rows belong in major A and major B. So what the sum is doing, it's like going through the data frame and for each row that belongs to each major, it's summing up the year, the year column. Um, and that really doesn't make sense in this situation because we just wanna find the major that admitted the most students. Um, and we just wanna find basically those total number of accepted applicants for each major. So that's why using count makes sense. And basically, step three would be to find uh, the major that admitted the most students, right? So we're gonna have to see what has the highest, the highest uh, total for these total number of accepted applicants, right? So, and we wanna store that in most students. So most students equals, um, well, if we just look at here, right, which major seems to have the highest number of admitted students? Well, here it should be like the other major, right, which has 3,164. How did I find that? Well, I just found the largest value from my data frame from either the year, the gender, or the admission column, it really doesn't matter because they're all the same, right? So I wanna use df major dot n largest, right? Because I wanna go ahead and find that largest value in these columns, and I wanna find the one row that has the largest um, number in either the year, gender, or admission column. Now I wanna do df major dot n largest, let's see, one comma <coughs> year, and to be honest, I don't know which order it is, right? I don't know if it should be like, let's say you forgot, like whether the, which arguments came in which order, right? Whether it was the row, like the number of rows you want or the, or the specific column. Well, I can go ahead and just try to run this and see, okay, well, it was in this order. It was the first argument should be the number of rows that you want to output. And the second argument should be which column you want to look at to find that largest value. Well, here it's year, but let's say you forgot. Let's say you put year and then one. Well, that's a good thing with 
you know, Python error um, messages that, is that they're really helpful, right? It says here line 15, basically, it um, there's a key error that comes, right? Basically it says that you're raising a key error because of the column that you, that you specified, right? Because over here, when the, the second argument was expected to be a column name, but when we put a number one instead, basically what, what this error is saying is that it can't find a column named one which makes sense because there's no column named one in our variable, which means that, you know, maybe we flip these arguments around, right? One should be the number of rows that we want, and then the second one should be year. So now, you know, the code compiles, and we can see that basically major, the other major, is the major that admitted the most students in our data frame. And let's say, let's see if I did everything correctly, it says major that admitted the most students, leave a single row of that major. It's the only row called most students. Um, and if I go ahead and submit this, well, I got it correct, which you know, makes sense because we followed what the question was asking. So here we ended up using count here just because we want to basically count up the total number of accepted applications for each specific major, right? It doesn't make sense to use sum or to use mean. So really the, the path for you know, getting these problems successfully is really understanding these steps that you need to do right, to tackle this question and really breaking it down to what should I group by, which column should I group by, and how should I aggregate my results. And if one thing doesn't work, right, be sure to output your data frame like we did after every single step and see that, okay, does this result make sense? If not, I should use um, another another way of doing this, right, or, or another, in this case, another um, method of aggregating all my data. So I, I hope this question and this explanation was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye.